Hey guys, it's Gio from Smart Home Makers. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can automate your garage door for less than $20 with a Shelly device and Home Assistant. So why not just use one of these remote key fobs? They work fine, but what I want to achieve, I want to be able to actually leave the house without one of these. So if in case I forget these, I can still use my mobile phone to open the garage door if I need to. You can also create cool automations like lights flashing when the garage door opens. You can also have your car detecting. So when your car comes back home, you can have the garage door automatically opening. There's a lot of possibilities and things that you can actually do with Home Assistant. If you're new to Home Assistant, the link down in the description below that will explain to you uh, what it is. But briefly, it's just a home automation open source system which I'm getting into, I've gotten into recently, and I think it's really cool. So now I'm gonna give you a brief demonstration of how you can use Home Assistant to open up your garage door. So here we have it here, if you can see this. I've got it set up on my mobile phone, all good, and I've got a uh, button, I just simply tap it here, and it would immediately trigger the garage opener to open, which is actually quite cool. This Shelly device, I've bought it myself with my own money. So this is an unbiased review. Now I also purchased a couple of extra ones for you guys as a thank you for the support that I have received in all my other videos. To win one of these devices, you're gonna to need to comment down below in the section below and we'll pick someone at random and we'll send it to them. Remember, follow the rules down in the regulations below, but I comment, like, and sub, and that will be great got a couple of these extra and I'll try and send them over to you. You can set up notifications and uh, text-to-speech uh, notifications if you've got like an Alexa or even just simply on your phone you can get like notified oh yes my uh, garage is actually opened so you can track activity to see if things are happening in your home. So if you've got an existing button like something like this you can run a couple of extra cables in parallel to your Shelly device you're going to need to power your Shelly device and I'll show you a wiring diagram of how you can do that. Well, basically you use 12 volt DC and you can use uh, AC power depending on which one uh, you're more comfortable with using. This is quite a straightforward DIY project. If you're not comfortable with uh, electricity, you can get a professional in. It's very simple for them to wire it up once they have the wiring diagram which comes within the box when you buy one of these Shelly devices. Now, if you want to pick up one of these Shelly devices and support the channel, I've got affiliate links down below and you'll find all type of Shelly devices, Shelly 1, power management, Shelly 2. So there's quite a lot of uh, range for different type of use cases. You can also use the garage door opening as a trigger to turn on some of your lights, to turn off your alarm, uh, you know, different things uh, really. Uh, possibilities are endless, like I mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's go up here and actually show you how this is wired up. So the Shelly device is in this box here and you can see there's a cable going back and I'll show you actually what that cable is doing but basically it's bringing power into the box here. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in, this in, zoom in this in properly. Okay, so within here, if we open this up, you should see, uh, you'll probably see this better than I can now. So follow the instruction manual for your specific uh, model. My one's a uh, Chamberlain model. And these two are the wires that you actually are feeding the Shelly device. Uh, so one of them goes in the port one and the other one goes in port two, right? And then these two feeding upwards here, they're going through here, this cable. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see this properly, they go inside this here. So now if I unscrew this, you should see the device uh, actually wired up. But before I do that, let me put this back. Because you really never can trust these systems entirely, it's always wise to have a physical switch. So this switch will completely disable the Shelly device in case, you know, I get hacked or for some reason it starts to play up and keeps opening the garage door. I can actually disable, kill the power off of this. And this is something I've got an electrician to put in for me. And this is something extra. You don't really have to do this. It's really up to you of how you want to wire it up. But it's wise to have a, a physical button. I unscrewed the box and now you can see the Shelly One device all in action. It, uh, there's a lot of things going on but I'll actually show you how this is wired up. So as you can see from here we've got two brown cables, sorry for the shaky footage, two brown cables. These brown cables are actually bell wires 
that are coming from here. So you can see the bell wires, the white bell wires are coming in these Wago connected clips. And then the Wago connected clips are actually going into the Shelly device. I remember the white cable clips came from, if you can see over here, uh, from here, right? They came inside here. They go into these junctions and then they go into the Shelly device itself. Now you can also see there are some physical cables and bell wire over here going back into the conduit, back to the physical switch. So that's how you achieve, uh, basically they've done, you know, they're in parallel. In terms of the power, um, power we've got, I think we've got a neutral, the blue wire here, but again, I'm not an electrician, so please don't take this as advice, but we normally have the live in live and the neutral in end, as you can see, uh, they're physically wired up. So I'm going to put some shots of wiring diagrams so you can actually see it for yourself, how it works. Now, full disclaimer, I didn't install this. So, but I do understand how it uh, works uh, from a software point of view, which I actually show you right now and explain you how the Shelly device works. This Shelly device here actually connects over Wi-Fi. So you're going to need to have some sort of good Wi-Fi coverage wherever you plan to install these. Bear in mind also, these normally are enclosed enclosures and depending on the type of enclosure you put them in, it actually can uh, be problematic and you might not even get your Wi-Fi signal to this device. So have a uh, think about actually where your Wi-Fi and how that is set up because it's sort of, this is one of the downsides of this device. Now what I did in my setup, I actually got an access point downstairs and this access point I use and I created a specific SSID that I only uh, use for these devices that are in downstairs. So I always know these are always going to connect to the same access point. I also set them on a static IP address, which is very useful because in case they reboot, I know where to find them if I can log in because they have a cool web UI interface. They also have a cool app which you can actually download yourself. It's a Shelly app and you can control this device without even actually needing to use Home Assistant at all. And a lot of the times I use Shelly to connect to it too. Couple of things to bear in mind with the cloud, uh, um, couple of things to bear in mind with the Shelly app. You are able to connect this via Shelly Cloud. So this will actually uh, talk to the uh, internet, uh, to the cloud and uh, you know, pass that information onwards. A lot of us are not comfortable with that. We want to keep everything local. That's why we've got something like uh, um, Home Assistant and we use MQTT uh, uh, transport protocol to actually uh, communicate. So you can disable cloud access so it only works locally. Now, if you have then a Home Assistant instance, which is exposed externally, like a Nabucasa or an external port forwarding system, then you're going to be able to access these devices still even if you're outside of your network in case you wanted to open a garage door for example for a gas or some other use case like a parcel dropping in and you want to open a garage door and and and, and let that uh, happen that way so now we put our shared device into our home network we can actually log into the ip address as i'm showing you right now and here we have some of some options that we can set so um, for the garage door we're going to set these options specifically so go to timer and look for the auto off setting. You're going to need to tick this on and set this as half a second. So this will enable basically the switch because how a normal garage door switch works, it works if you um, switch and then it depresses. So it sort of simulates that action. You can enable the uh, MQTT and also set up a username and password. But uh, we don't need that now at this stage for Home Assistant. The cloud option is an option. You can either disable or enable the cloud. Uh, this will depend if you want to use a Shelly device only if you're on your local network or if you want to be able to use Shelly from outside of your network. Other important setting to consider in the settings, the power on default mode, it's always good to turn it uh, off so that the uh, Shelly is able to turn on and actually, you know, action the, uh, the garage door and simulate the button press. You normally would uh, need to also update the firmware before you actually carry on with this. So at this stage, all is done and then we can move on to Home Assistant. Right, so in Home Assistant, let's go into the integration page and immediately we can see two Shelly devices have been discovered uh, immediately. So we can configure them by using the configure button. We're gonna say yes, submit. 
at that stage uh, it's running and here we go so we have our uh, Shelly device we can pair it to an area we can create a new area or we can leave that for later click finish and while we're here we can also do the other one we just configure submit finish that was very simple now let's see what we can do and actually transform this switch into a garage door so as usual the code you'll find it in my blog just google leonardo smart home makers you should find it but for your convenience i'm also going to leave a link down below but if you google it it's just going to help me with the google algorithm so let's go to your configuration.yaml file so go to into your file editor so copy that in and save this now there's going to be a couple of things you're going to need to modify based on your own situation so first thing to note is the door sensor so the door sensor in my example the contact sensor it's a binary underscore sensor um, i've called it garage underscore door underscore sensor you're going to need to replace that and you replace that basically at the value template and also in the icon template when we are uh, actually checking if it's open or not to change uh, certain things. So this is uh, all working. The name of the garage door is going to be garage door. We are using the platform template and we're using a specific cover, which is the garage door cover. Now consider also a few things. You have three buttons, an open cover, a closed cover and a stop cover. Now the close cover is the turn underscore off and the open cover and the stop cover are the same. They're using the same switch dot turn underscore on. But in our example, because our um, switch is like a relay um, and it is more of a toggle. So if you, if you turn it on and you turn it off from the same, same action, it will just change state. So potentially you can also use toggle instead of uh, switch dot turn on. And you don't need to include all of these. Uh, they're not uh, compulsory. Other thing to note, icon template. Icon template is quite useful to actually change the little garage door, door icon, which I'm gonna show you now. But there's one more thing to add into uh, the configurations uh, files. Let's go into the customize.yaml file now. So tap create a new file and call it customize.yaml. And within here now you can actually paste this little code here that's gonna actually help me identify the device class. Now that we put all files in, now we can restart Home Assistant and see how this all ties together in the dashboard. Right, so let's add the our garage entity on our dashboard. So add card and let's click entity let's go and type in garage door you can already see the beautiful symbol here save and there you have it so in this example we're using one entity so it's going to when you click on it or tap on it on your mobile phone it's going to uh, toggle on and toggle off so it's going to open the garage door and close it and because it's night time now i don't want to open the garage door and wake everyone up but i'll show you how it actually changes if i go to the developer tools and I actually mimic a potential change. So I change the state to open and I change the icon to garage door dash open. I set state, you can see it updated here down below. So if we go to the overview tab, go to my garage door and now you'll see the garage door yellow and you'll see it also open. So if you enjoyed this video, you wanna find out more about home automation. I've got another video for you. We've got five top automations with zone presence detections like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and let's keep in touch see you in the next video